What is up, captains and cadets? Hey, today I want to discuss a crazy topic that's been kind of floating around Discord and Twitter X, and it's should Galactic Offering ships, the ones that we are buying at this very moment, should they have some type of perk in the future of the high risk zone in the Star Atlas game? This would be a perk for us being early investors. Do you like this idea? Do you not like this idea? Let's see both sides of the argument. Let's get into it. Let's go. What is up, muds? What's up, bonies? And what is up, boosters? So I want to preface something really fast about this video. Nothing I'm about to talk about is set in stone. This is just an open conversation that was put forth by the CEO of Star Atlas one evening on Discord while drinking wine. And let's listen to Virtual, one of our community members, um, just tell us how things all went down. He happened to be there that one Friday night. I was not. Let's just listen to this real fast. Something that, um, he described this on the Metaverse Nomads on Sunday. So take it away, Virtual. I just, I just to give people context. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was Friday night. Michael Wagner was drinking wine and decided to uh, just jump on voice chat and drop this bomb. I mean, this is a complete game changer. So, and, and Forge, this is a very, very exciting news, in my opinion, for the Titan. And just to give Forge context, mm -hmm. you know, before there was a high risk zone where if you would have taken the Titan, a bunch of commanders jumped on you and blew you out of the sky. Well, there's your investment. It's gone forever. Yeah. So this is a, a new proposal. So very exciting. Go ahead, Fancy. So there you go, man. Purple lips are loose lips, right? So I didn't happen to be around that Friday night and I happened to be in Boston and I looked at my phone on Saturday morning and I saw this poll by the Hologram News Network. All right, Star Atlas High Risk Zone Poll by Mike Wagner. Should there be a lifetime insurance on galactic asset offering ships even in the high risk zone? This question was posed by Michael Wagner during an impromptu community session like Friday night and 61.1% of people voted yes and 38.9% of people voted no and there was 301 participants in this poll so it looks like yes won the vote and I just want to um, talk about my personal opinion that I, I put forth and this is before I actually knew all the facts it was just kind of I was in shock this Saturday morning but this was my response my initial response I should say and I'm not trying to sway people one way or sway people um, the other, and I'm not trying to influence anyone, this is just my initial response, and I wrote, I voted no here. This is one of the biggest draws for me to Star Atlas. The fact that you can choose to risk your ship in one section of the game is the game. It's the hook. Nobody should be safe, plus it will even out the playing field when whales start to whittle down their assets. And I kind of stand behind some of that, but I also learned a lot more. And I just kind of want to put forth all the facts that I've learned out to you guys out there in YouTube land and let you guys make your own decisions. This actually might be a topic in the upcoming um, uh, Atlas Brew. I'm not too sure, but uh, let's go to a post by Siggy, an awesome, awesome post that actually explained it a lot further. Um, Star Atlas, help Wagner brainstorm help our ceo michael wagner brainstorm the question from michael wagner should there be a lifetime insurance on galactic asset offering ships even in the high risk zone read all these details before voting all right galactic asset offering high risk zone in this idea a galactic asset offering asset is anything not manufactured or crafted with a blueprint redeem ships and all ships purchased from automata including those sold in the future are considered galactic asset offering ships galactic asset offering ships can't be destroyed in the high risk zone every crafted ship can this would be an og benefit two model system of asset pricing crafted ships would be much cheaper than galactic asset offering ships possibly up to 70 percent cheaper so let's just say an air bike is ten dollars it would only be three dollars in the future so we paid a lot more for our ships but our ships have this insurance policy basically in the high risk zone. Insurance policy isn't the, quite the right word, but I'm going to continue. New players would have the option to buy a more expensive insured galactic asset offering ship from Automata or buy a crafted much cheaper ship from another player that can be destroyed in the high risk zone. Galactic asset offering ships will have very long 6 to 12 month respawn times when they are destroyed. So you will you will get your ship back, but there will be a very long wait if you lose your ship in the high risk zone, right? So six to 12 month respawn times when they are destroyed, but, but they are not lost forever. 
If you don't want to wait six to 12 months to respawn, you pay an Atlas fee for a faster respawn and all revenues, the fees would go to the Polis DAO. So if you are like me and have a whole bunch of Polis staked in the DAO, this would actually be some type of revenue for us people that are members of the DAO. So this actually could be a really interesting um, and financially, um, a financially lucrative thing for us DAO holders, right? Entering the high risk zone would effectively be skill-based betting. The fee wouldn't be cheap, it would possibly be 10 to 20% of the ship's price. Remember, high risk zone rewards are eight to 10 times higher than those in the safe zone. By the way, thank you Siggy so much for this post. This is an awesome post. I shall continue. This could create a higher ship burn. Crafting a commander ship might take one year in the current form, but with cheaper crafted ships, it could take much less time. This could incentivize more players to enter the high risk zone, including those with larger ships. This idea may allow for ship crafting in Sage sooner than planned, as it would create an avenue for Automata to simultaneously generate revenue from ship sales. Galactic asset offering ships and crafted ships would have the same in game performance. And then basically leave your comments and ideas for Wagner in the comment below. This information is just for brainstorming purposes, rough numbers and estimations were used, not financial advice. So again, very close to the other poll, but 59.6% voted yes and 23.4% voted no. And 17% just didn't really want to vote, but they just wanted to show the results. Now there is a lot of amazing debate that goes on in the comments right here and also on Discord. If you guys care to do a little bit of a search in Discord, um, but please go check out Siggy's post and please read all the comments and please leave your own comment because Wagner, I'm sure, is reading everything that is posted right here. He is um, pinned to this tweet. So there's all sorts of thoughts going both directions. Um, I'm just going to go over to um, my post right here. Um, virtual uh, wrote, it's still going to be high risk. It's going to be um, high stakes poker versus Russian roulette. And um, he continued to write, um, just to add some examples, imagine someone with a commander who gets wrecked and has to spend 10,000 for a fast respawn that would sting if they chose not to pay then they can't use the ship for 90 days that's 90 days of lost revenue the high risk zone pain will be real um, he went on to say um, one more clarification the convo was a respawn fee not necessarily insurance insurance would mean paying before probably a lower fee than respawn having both options would be awesome so again, it's like, it's, it's, um, I was saying ins insurance, so you wouldn't be like paying insurance the whole entire time, but you'd have the insurance that you'd be able to actually respawn that ship one day that it wouldn't be gone forever. Now, a little thought on my, um, just that I had, um, a lot of these ships are pretty rare. Like there might be only, um, 12,000. I think that some of the legendary ships, there's only like 1500 of those ships. Um, even some ships, even less. Uh, I'm going to talk about those ships in the future, but there are some ships out there that are less than a thousand at the moment. Um, but some people are investing in those ships and they are going to hold on to those ships for maybe a long period of time. Now, if those ships aren't being burned, then their investment is not exactly what they thought they were buying initially because they had thought I'm going to buy the ship. There's only 1500 of these ships out there. Some of these ships are going to be destroyed in the high risk zone that's going to bring value to my ship sometime in the future. So I thought that this is kind of like a little bit of a twist on that. It's like, that's a kind of a point of argument right there for people that want the ships to be burned. Right. Um, there is uh, some people when you read the comments that are like, Hey, maybe burn the ship, but let them actually like be able to either have the Atlas, get the Atlas back for that ship so they can buy a different ship in the future. Or maybe they can um, uh, let them like have, have a new ship, but maybe not that original uh, galactic offering ship um so there there's some thoughts out there that kind of have to be smoothed out um for sure um here here's a nice little um uh, comment by gris that was on my post right here um it's not about being somewhat high risk many of us imagine that the total burn and what that would mean for the game that's basically what i was just saying there's only one of these left if it is lost it is gone kind of kind of different if it was on a cooldown no and he, he's talking about uh in eve online ship that there's actually only one of these um ships left in the entire i don't know eve galactic world right so um that's kind of what i was thinking maybe it's a couple of the ships that i even bought um i was buying them on purpose because i was hoping that you know like 
the whales having a whole bunch of ships and they have a whole bunch of money and they can always buy new ships in the future they were just going to go ham or some of the you know the larger guilds that are out there they were just going to one was going to attack the other guild and there was just going to be this all-out war in the high risk zone a lot of those ships were going to be destroyed and maybe one of those ships that i bought that's going to you know that was kind of kind of rare in the first place was going to be extremely rare in the future so that's kind of like why i kind of like the actual idea of the burn um so a whole bunch of people kind of agreed with my original um my original thought right here that the high risk zone you know that that's like the hook that was the whole point of star atlas um but i don't know i see both ways because wagner's actually trying to give us a, some type of benefit too right He's trying to give us being early investors like some you know so, something very special there that we could actually go really enjoy the high risk zone because the high risk zone is going to be super exciting it's going to have all sorts of things out there that we're not going to be able to um, get in the medium risk zone and the safe zone a lot of different experiences a lot of gameplay loops and stuff like that but we'll be able to experience those things as early investors and not have to take as big of a risk as some of the future players in star atlas right um so uh, I just want to uh, play a couple things from um, the Metaverse Nomads from the other day. Now, I listen to Metaverse Nomads. Like my channel is kind of silly and goofy, right? I throw out, you know, I try to, I try to like throw out my most intelligent thoughts, but I feel like I'm, I'm dumb. I'm a dummy. I always say I'm as dumb as a pickle, right? Why are you, why are you guys even listen to me? I have no clue, right? Um, and sometimes when I listen to the Metaverse Nomads, I'm like, why am I even making videos, man? I feel like the little kid at the little kid's table at Thanksgiving or like one of the holidays, you know? And they're like the big kids in the other room, like the adults in the other room sitting at the big kid's table, the adult's table. And I'm just kind of listening in from the little kid's table. I'm here. I'm going to go ask to join the grown-up table. <laughs> Good luck. You really think they're going to let you? <laughs> You'll see. I'm gonna make it to the grown-up table and leave all you children behind. Uh, I don't know. One day maybe I'll be at the uh, at the big kid, big kids table, but right now I'm still at the little kids table. But um, I seriously though, like, I keep making videos because I realize there's a lot of you guys sitting sitting you know here at the little kids table with me. So, so that's why I kind of you know I keep going right. But I love the metaverse nomads, but they're like in a whole different level than me. And uh, so I just want to play some real quick thoughts um that they threw out there. Okay, check these out. I'm, I love you guys, Metaverse Nomads. Hopefully you guys don't mind me playing these clips from your show because your show was awesome. Love you guys. I was just going to say with that one thing there about, you know, a benefit for, for OGs. I mean, that, that's nice and all. But my question is, is, is there some type of a ship identifier? Because if all things are the same otherwise and two ships meet in the high risk zone and one is an OG ship, but it's unidentified as such, you know that their risk and therefore their uh, the way they're, they're going to go at it is going to be with that consideration. And so I would think that if I didn't have an OG or Gao ship that uh, I would want to know if I was in combat with someone who did. Uh, and, and, you know, there was a lot of uh, hot topics that were exchanged, uh, hot points during um, uh, the Discord conversation and on the, the voice chat. And that, one of the things that you mentioned was uh, was that, where it's like, hey, how do you know who is a Gao ship versus who isn't? You know, you'll have immediate activity going into the high zone. It'll be a bustling uh, <laughs> uh, combat zone for sure, you know, knowing that most of the ships are Gao ships. As, uh, but as time goes on, mm -hmm. every, you know, every, every following Gao ship release will have its insurance. It might be a higher price and you might want to pay that premium because the insurance is just baked in. Uh, but yeah, it, it's gonna it, it's gonna be a, a crazy adventure roller coaster ride, uh, if this is actually what happens, because this was just some uh, thoughts that Wagner had and um, he had some wine. Yeah, yeah I like this comment by Gritz. Imagine all those amazing Eve Wars um, six months later, all those ships respawned after a cool down. <laughs> yeah, there's a big part of me that agrees with, uh, you know, uh, Viking Benny is his uh, comment thereafter is like, so you've got you, you've got the, you know, the safe zone, you got the, you know, medium risk zone, high risk zone is designed to be exactly that. And, and you know, all of us are going to follow along the big battles because it's the higher risk out there. And it's a choice. It's a choice. You want the bigger rewards, yeah. you got to take that risk. So by putting the insurance there, there's an element for me that kind of takes away from from, you know, the, the excitement of the HRZ. Well, I think this is still high risk. The difference is this is high risk, high stakes poker versus Russian roulette, right? Because, <laughs> you know, if, if you, let's take Forge's tight T1 for an example, let's say it costs them 150K to respawn that within, you know, a few couple days. I mean, that's going to hurt, right, Forge? I mean, that's not inconsequential. That's going to sting. And of course, he could wait and respawn for free, um, which then he's losing money every day that the ship is not online versus, you know, with the previous rules, it's game over. The ship's gone, and you know I think the GG Collective would be a little bit upset. So, you know, I, I think it's here's the most exciting part about this for me, from a gameplay perspective. I think the HRZ is going to be ten times or a hundred times more active 
right? And I saw a lot of people like Bodhi and Wiki, Wiki, Wick and a bunch of other people say, okay, well now I'm going to go in the high risk zone. So whereas mm -hmm. before, I think you've only had a few mad men in there. Now you're going to have a, a much bigger percentage of the community going in there. And that's going to make it a lot more fun and exciting. to me. So. It's going to add to the flywheel too. I mean, it's going to yeah, add that, that the revenue source that's going to, you know, push it through, you know, if people can, you know, spawn their shit faster afterwards. So yeah, the pushback, but the pushback mainly was that as well. Uh, after reading through, I wasn't uh, the most talkative during the call, but uh, at the at the end of the day, it's uh, the, the purpose of Wagner thinking that of this was to give value back in some way to the initial, you know, early purchaser, uh, early ship purchasers, just like in other games where like for Mystic Axes, for example, in, in Axie Infinity, what's the added utility to that, right? Maybe not so much of a stronger attack in a game, but there's some type of benefit, right? Uh, it's, it's a hard thing to juggle. And this is why Wagner brought it up, because if, if they didn't insure any ships, then you, know, you have infinite supply of ships and there's no differentiation. And the early purchaser of these ships and funders of the project ultimately, and uh, you know, are, are not getting anything uh, which, you know, if that's what uh, what they decide, then, you know, there'll be a whole other conversation on that. But this is him thinking through and, and, and approaching the community with, hey, this is how we can meet in the middle or somewhat of a percentage split of like, hey, early purchasers of, of ships or going forward, any Gao ships are going to be insured. And, uh, you know, it, it does help the economy. You know, it does. It, it does there's, we could go through the list of pros and cons, but I, don't, I think there's more pros than cons if we just maybe uh, think through it a little longer or maybe have more conversations uh, as the weeks go on. So thank you, Nomads, and thank you, Virtual, for all your thoughts there. Um, those guys covered it really well. Um, I just wanted to make a second video just in case some of you guys missed that one on Sunday. It's a pretty interesting and kind of an important topic, too. I mean, it's big changes that could happen in the game if you guys don't get your thoughts there. So please leave your thoughts on um, Hologram News Network's post. Um, make sure you're following HNN. Um, leave your thoughts on Siggy's post um, because Wagner's reading them, you know, and I'm sure that's also being relayed to everyone on the Automata team. Um, this is, I don't know, it's a really interesting topic. I could be swayed either direction at this point. I love the idea of the burn. I really do think that that was the hook that hooked me into the game. But I also like the idea that maybe I can explore the hybrid zone without losing my ships. Please leave a comment down below. I love you guys all. You guys are the best. Coming from the little kid's table, make sure you subscribe and hit that like button. I will talk to you guys in the next one. Later. So in the meantime, might as well enjoy being a kid.